All right. Um, it's been recorded. Welcome to tutorial package year seven. Um, Um, it's a microphone uh, and the headset. Okay, so now uh, it's being recorded. Uh, in this session, uh, we plan to cover these topics uh, to understand fractions, decimals in real life context. We plan to solve basic algebraic equations. Uh, we want to learn calculating percentages or discounts and saves, calculating area and perimeter of basic shapes, explore probability with everyday examples. We also cover questions and a practical uh, coding example, actually making a bridge between math and uh, Python. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first things that is, uh, we start usually tutorial packages is open-ended question. Why is understanding mathematics important in our daily lives? Um, yeah. Important because it helps us with uh, practical uses within life. Yeah, we can solve a lot of complex problems in wow. engineering, wow. environmental, yeah, all science, good. Mathematics is a fundamental part of our day, everyday lives, from managing finances, shopping, cooking, and home repairs, to understanding sports statistics, planning travel, and making informed decisions. Math is everywhere. For instance, in Sydney, people use math to calculate travel times with public transport, budget their monthly expenses, and even plan their daily schedules. By understanding and applying mathematical concepts, we become better problem solvers and more efficient in our day-to-day -day activities. Uh, yeah, how can we use fractions and decimals to measure ingredients accurately when cooking? Um, we can um, use fractions and decimals to uh, tell us how much one ingredient will be inside of that mm -hmm. uh, general dish. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, when cooking? I uh, your effort that's that was excellent effort. Thanks to thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, that was excellent input. Um, when cooking, it's essential to measure ingredients accurately to ensure the recipe turns out as expected. For example, if the recipe calls for a, a one and a half cups of flow, and you only have a one over four cup measuring tool, you can use fractions to determine that you need six one over four cups of flow. In Sydney, the local bakery might use this method to ensure consistency in their bread recipes. <clears throat> All right. Um, do you have a question? All right. A chef in Melbourne, for example, uh, is preparing a cake and needs two and a half cups of sugar. They only have a half cup measure. So they will need to use it five times. The total is 2.5 cups of sugar. But, but the half. Mm -hmm. And we want to see how many half cup measure 
needs to be used in order to uh, meet the needs. So they divide 2.5 by half and they, they will reach to five. Understanding fractions and decimals in real life contexts. And the question here is Sarah has three over four of a pizza and it's half of it. How much pizza does she have left? Oh, one out of four. One out of four. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's excellent input. And thanks for sharing your thoughts. First, we find how much pizza Sarah eats. That's half of total. Half of total, one over two, multiplied three over four. So one multiplied by three, two multiplied by four will give us three over eight. Then we subtract the eaten part from total. So that's the amount Sava uh, eats, and that's the uh, total. So three over four minus three over eight, we need the same denominator. In order to convert denominator four to eight, like this, similar to this one, similar to this one, they have, uh, we need to multiply it by two and the same with this one. So we will have six over eight. Then we would say six over eight minus three over eight will give us three over eight because six minus three is three and denominator is kept the same. Um, Sora has three over eight of the pizza left. Let's um, explore this open-ended question. How can basic algebra help us in planning a budget? Take a moment. There is no wrong answer. Your efforts are commendable. Thanks for doing research, exploring, and thinking about it, and sharing your viewpoints. Um, I'm not sure. Yep. Uh, this is commendable. We will explore it together. Um, basic algebra can help us understand relationships between different financial variables and solve for unknowns. For example, if you know you spend 150 on groceries each month, and this is 30% of your monthly budget, you can set up the equation. Uh, yes? Times your max equals to 150. Okay. So once you find it, you will uh, Total. find that um, because uh, so x will equals 150 50. divided by 0 0.3, which yes. is 30%. So yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, Jesse, thank you so much. Um, and then solving this, yes, as you mentioned, 150 divided by 0 0.3. So your monthly budget is $500. Uh, do you have any question? Thank you for. Um, as practical example, in Brisbane, for example, a family wants to save $300 each month. If their income is $3,000 and their fixed expenses are 2,400, they can use algebra to determine how much discretionary spending they have. 
let x be the discretionary spending. So 3,000 minus 2,400 minus x equals 300 each month. Solving this for x, we will have uh, 2,000, uh, so 3,000 minus 600, we will have 600 on the uh, left side. Minus x equals to 300. So, yeah, so if you move 600 to the right and you know, kept it as the same, you will have 300. Uh, that is 600 negative, and that equals to negative 300. Multiplying both sides by negative one, uh, we will reach to this equation x equals 300. Yeah. All right, solving basic algebraic equations. Uh, the question here is if 2x plus 3 equals 11, what is the value of x? Um, first of all, we'll move the 3, so minus 3 on both sides to get rid of the 3. Yeah. So now we'll come um, 2x equals to 8. 8? Yes, thank you. Thanks for so divide excellent next, response. Divide two from uh -huh. uh, divide two from both. Uh and we'll have our answer of x equals to four. X equals to four. Thank you. Excellent input. Your efforts are commendable. So as you mentioned, and thanks for your input, we subtract three from both sides. To get rid of three, then we divide by two, and then x equals four. Let's consider this open-ended question. How can understanding percentages help you find the best deals when shopping? Um, percentages can help you find the best deals mm -hmm. by um looking at the amount of um, discount that yes. the shop is giving and finding the best one. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. And, you know, one step forward is a progress and it is commendable. I'm responsible about your learning. Yeah, understanding percentages allows you to calculate the discount amounts and the final price of items on sale. For example, if a jacket is originally priced at 100 and is on a 25% discount, you can calculate the discount amount as $100 multiplied by 0.25, and it will give us $25. And the sale price as $100 minus $25 discount, it will become fairly vital. Thank you for your great response. Practical example, uh, like during the sale in Sydney, a uh, student finds a laptop priced at 1,200 um, with a 15% discount. Uh, they calculate the discount amount, 0 0.15, multiplied by 1,200. Uh, it will become 180. And the sale price, if they reduce it or deduct 180 from the original price, they will have to pay only 1,020. All right. So the next topic is calculating percentages or discounts and sales. The question here is store is having a 20% off sale on a jacket that costs $50. How much will the jacket cost after the discount? 
um, after the discount by times, uh, first of all, we times 50 mm -hmm. by 0 0.2, um, oh. which equals 10. Yes. Next, we minus 50 by 10, and we'll get our answer of 40. 40, yes, thank you. All right. So as you mentioned, as an excellent response, we first calculate 20% of $50. So 20 over 100 multiplied by 50. And as mentioned by you, it's $10. Then we subtract the discount from the original price. So 50 minus 10 will be equal to $40. And then the jacket will cost $40 after the discount. Thank you for your great effort. And uh, it's coming down. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's start with the uh, opening the question. Uh, how can calculating the area and perimeter of shapes be useful in real estate? Um, it can be useful in real estate because it will tell us how much a building is worth based on its land. Mm -hmm. Um, based on the land mass. Uh, because normally in real estate, um, the prices are determined by the uh land mass of the region. Yes. So um, by knowing the area of perimeter, you can calculate how much that area will cost. Yes, and families can consider it when you know they uh, they will see if it matches their family size or not. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So far, so good. That's um, excellent response. So yeah, calculating the area and perimeter helps in determining the size of properties and planning renovations. For example, if you are buying, as you mentioned by you, if you are buying a new apartment, knowing the area in square meters can help you compare the size with other properties. Like a practical example in Canberra, a homeowner wants to build a new fence around the rectangular garden, measuring 20 meters by 15 meters. They calculate the perimeter uh, like this, uh, rectangle. Uh, so it would be 20, this would be 15. So two, uh, multiplied by 20 plus 15, because we have 20 as well here, and 15 as well here. So for perimeter, starting from this point, 20 plus 15 plus 20 plus 15 equals to 2 multiplied by 20 plus 15, which equals to 70. That's for perimeter. To know how much fencing material to buy. Then um, we have a question, a uh, calculation, a uh, question, uh, find the area of a rectangle uh, with a length of eight centimeter and the width of five centimeter. Um, uh, you can easily find the area of the rectangle by times in eight by five. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for excellent response and thanks for sharing your thoughts. So as mentioned by you, the area equals length multiplied by width, which is eight centimeter multiplied by five equals 40 squared centimeters. Let's cover open-ended question uh, for the next uh, concept. Um, how can understanding probability help in making decisions? Um, understanding probability can help by uh, help our decision making by helping us understand how probable one decision is to another. Yeah, thanks for sharing your uh, thoughts and viewpoints, and uh, that is 
actually excellent input. Understanding probability helps in assessing risks and making informed choices. For example, if you know the probability of rain tomorrow is 70 percentage, uh, you might decide to carry an umbrella. Um, like in Melbourne, as a practical example in Australia, where we live, where we study, where we work, sports enthusiasts uses probability to bet on a football game. If the probability of their team winning is 0 0.6 or let's say 60%, they assess this alongside other factors to decide how much to bet. Let's uh, explore probability with everyday examples. The question here, what is the probability of rolling a four on a standard six-sided die? One out of six. One out of six. Thank you for sharing this and thank you for your excellent response. There is one chance to roll a four out of six possible outcomes. So the probability is the number of possibilities over the whole number of possibilities. So it's one time which we which we receive four out of six over the all possibilities, which is six. So yes, thank you for a great response. Here we have a set of questions to cover. The first question is: if three over five of a class are girls and there are 20 students in total, how many girls are in the class? Take a moment to Think about it. Um, two, three out of five is 60%. Mm. So 20 times 60% will, um, it is. 12? What, yeah, 12. Thank you. Excellent response. Uh, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Next question. Um, what is the probability of drawing a red card from a standard deck of cards? Um, there are uh, a standard deck of cards is 52 and half of the cards are black and the other half is um, red. Excellent so, input. Um, one of uh, the chances of drawing a red card will become a half. Half, yeah, fantastic. Sorry. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for exploring and sharing your thoughts. Yeah. Sorry, what's going on? You're right. You're right. This is the Python code developed to solve mathematical uh, problems. Um, if you um, if you If you search for uh, your teacher, Rashid uh, Kevanian, and then uh, it up. Uh, 
you will uh, see uh, repositories. Yeah, so if you search for your teacher, Fashi Tevonia, and then, uh, you know, GitHub, uh, then you click on uh, repositories here. Uh, then you uh, click on sessions Python. And then you search for um, applying Python to solve mathematical problems. Applying Python to solve mathematical problems. You see the code is um, here. We, you can run the code, you can download the code, you can change the code. Um, so if you run the code, in um, online environments, like let's say uh, you can go to website W3 schools and then in that oh, website, oh. you can click on Python, then you can click on uh, try it yourself, then you can copy uh, the code, don't worry about it. If it's there, I have been designed for your learning and then you run the code on the right side, uh, you can see the result of the code. On the left side, we define a function, which is to calculate area. It has two input arguments. One is length, another is width. And the function return length multiplied by width. Here, we, you as a programmer, define example usage. The length is eight, the width is five. Then you call the function. The function was named calculate area. And the, it has two input arguments, length and width. And the output is saved in uh, area. Uh, yeah, it's been recorded. And then you print F because you want to have a text string and also a variable. A variable is area. And that's the result of calculations. Length multiplied by width. As you see on the right side, the area of the rectangle is 40 square centimeters. And that's exactly a bridge between math concepts and programming uh, concepts, uh, programming solutions. On the left side, you see Python code to calculate probability. And the function is calculate probability. So you have two arguments, events, outcomes, and total outcomes. And then you return events outcome divided by total outcome. That's the definition of probability. An example usage is event outcome is one. Like for example, uh, you have a time, you have a, uh, a ties, um, and total outcomes is six. So the probability is to call the function, which is calculate probability. And then with these two arguments, you can print the results and that's the variable. So you can see the probability <laughs> of rolling a four on a six uh, side die is 0 0.16, which is one over six if you, uh, if, if we, yeah, good. Um, so, for this one, uh, back into the slide, uh, uh, we can, you know, reach to this result. And that was uh, a coverage, a tutorial package for level seven, um, a very concise for decision, and I will stop. Uh, showing. Um, do you have any questions for this package? Okay. Um, Am I allowed to go to the toilet?
yeah, we can uh, go through the other levels in different uh, packages. I will stop recording. Uh, so do you have any question about year seven? Oh. All good? Yeah. Okay, how was it? <laughs> sure, that was good. Okay.